Okay, in this short video, I want to show you the main project um, we will code here from scratch and how we can approach um, this ICO project. Well, we will create this ICO landing page and our own ERC20 crypto token on the Ethereum platform. We have here everything um, what an ICO needs. For example, at the start, um, we have here an area for your video and where you can um, present your idea, areas for the white paper, the roadmap and the team. And of course, um, we can also contribute to the ICO. Um, to do so, we can buy DC tokens. For example, let's do this now. By the way, um, we have here protections um, to stop somebody from just writing nonsense. Um, for example, if you write here a string, now I want to buy DC tokens for two Ether. We have here a bonus um, of 25% for the next two weeks. As portal to the blockchain, we will use MetaMask. Um, you can see this pop-ups um, automatically. The blockchain has an asynchronous behavior. Um, therefore, to buy the tokens, um, this always takes some amount of time. For this reason, we have here a small um, rating animation. And then after time, we successfully bought DC tokens. You can see your new um, tokens, for example, here under my DC tokens. And we can also check now um, this transaction on the ringb.esa scan. Um, RingB is a test network, um, but everything here is also working on the mainnet. You can see the blockchain has successfully tracked our transaction. But now, how can we approach this project? Well, we will cover a lot of stuff here. Therefore, I structured um, this project into three major lectures. In the first lecture, we will create the ICO smart contract and the ERC20 token. We will learn here, for example, what Ethereum is, how a blockchain works, how to write your own smart contract with Solidity, etc. Next, in the second lecture, we will set up our web page. We will create here all the basic HTML, CSS and JavaScript code. As foundation for this framework, um, we will use React.js. And at last, um, we will combine the smart contract with our web page. This is probably the most difficult part because um, here we will do all the stuff like working with Web3, Node.js, or compiling the Solidity code um, into JSON. But then finally, we basically um, covered everything in order to start with um, Solidity and creating your own ICO page and crypto token. Okay, that's everything for now. And in the next video, we will start with what Ethereum actually is. First of all, before we start, let's discuss what Ethereum actually is. Well, in short, we could say Ethereum is a decentralized database. The big difference here compared with centralized databases, which are used by applications like Facebook, Twitter, etc., is that no specific person has control over the data. Instead, the data which are created by the users are controlled by the whole network. The network per se is formed by one or more so-called nodes. A node can be everyone, so everyone who has a computer or a laptop just can install the software on the node and is then a participant of the Ethereum network. All of these nodes are connected together to form the actual network. And every node can contain a full copy um, of the so-called blockchain. The blockchain is the technology behind the scenes um, which makes this decentralized behavior possible. How the blockchain is working in detail um, we will discuss in the next video. Now let's have a look at the real application um, that is made by Ethereum. Because theoretical, you can create any kind of application with Ethereum where you need to store data. The famous example for that is probably the game CryptoKitties. 
CryptoKitties is interesting um, because it's the first game based on the blockchain technology at all. By the way, the structure of our ICO um, we will code in this course from scratch um, is really similar um, to this game. To play this game, you need a kind of portal um, to get access to the Ethereum blockchain. With portal, I mean the um, add-on MetaMask. We will use this add-on for our ICO as well. How we can install MetaMask, um, we will see in another video. For now, I only want to show you um, how the front end of such applications on the Ethereum platform um, are working. Therefore, let's log in um, in MetaMask. As you can see, MetaMask um, displays different networks. This is important because um, that shows us that there are different blockchains um, of Ethereum. The RingB test network um, is a test environment for developers. So perfect for our purposes. All the transactions we make here um, doesn't cost real money. Then we have the Ethereum mainnet. As you can see, the page is refreshing because the mainnet um, is the real Ethereum blockchain. Um, so this is the blockchain where you can buy, for example, ESA. And the game CryptoKitties um, is running on this blockchain. And what I want to show you is um, that you can see the interface looks like in other games. There are no big differences in the front end. The only big difference here is the backend, so the way um, how we store the data of the users. That's everything what I want to mention in this short video. So summarize, it's important to understand um, that we have different blockchains and that the um, Ethereum platform is a kind of decentralized database, which is formed by every participant um, of the Ethereum network. And in the next video, we're gonna have a look at the blockchain. In this video, we will have a look at the fundamentals of a blockchain. Because the blockchain is the base technology of Ethereum. And without understanding these basics, um, it will be really hard to understand how Ethereum works. Therefore, let's have a look at this diagram. We can see here the basic structure of the Bitcoin blockchain. The Bitcoin blockchain is really similar um, to Ethereum's. There are only a few differences um, which we will discuss in the next video. So in general, a blockchain um, contains a block and the block can store any kind of data. For example, the index of the block, the timestamp. So when we created this block, a nonce, um, this we will discuss in just a few moments and datas. The data can be anything, but particular in the case of this um, Bitcoin blockchain, we only store um, the transactions. Then we always have a hash. Um, to understand the hash, um, let's pivot to another tab. We have here a 256 um, hash generator. This generator has a similar behavior um, like it's used um, on the blockchain. The SHA-256 um, algorithm um, produces a fingerprint of digital data. For example, let's write A. Then you can see the hash of A. Let's add um, a B. Then you can see the hash of A, B. If we remove B, we can see we have the same hash um, just like before. We can also write here any kind of data. So important here is um, you are always going to get a hash that is this long, so this many characters. With that in mind, um, let's go back. Um, in the case of the blockchain, the hash is the fingerprint of all of these data. Only one thing here is special. You can see the hash starts with four zeros. This has something to do um, with the nonce. That nonce um, is just a number that you can set to try to find a number that fits so that the hash um, starts with four zeros. 
that means the hash is the combination of all of these datas and the right number of the nonce to create the hash um, that starts with four zeros. And by the way, that what we call mining is the calculation of the right number of the nonce so that the hash starts with a certain number of zeros. And therefore, the number of the zeros is responsible for the difficulty. The more zeros the hash needs, the more difficult um, is it to find the right number of the nonce. And finally, if a miner can find the right hash, so the hash that starts with four zeros, then the whole block is signed and we can start a new one. We have a chain of blocks and therefore we call this block chain. In order to create now a new ballot block, we need to consider the hash of the previous block. Because the new hash that the miners are going to calculate is a combination of the data that also contains the previous hash. And of course the number um, of the nonce. And this is one of the key features um, of the blockchain. Because the new hash um, contains always the hash of the previous blocks and that makes the blockchain really safe. We cannot just change data from the past um, because that would break the chain and the block um, wouldn't be valid anymore. Therefore, the longer the blockchain is, um, the safer it is. Another important topic is the public and private key. Because without the public private key, um, there would be no protection um, to stop somebody from just adding a transaction um, that spends all of someone else's money uh, to them. Therefore, the way how the blockchain solves this um, is by verify transactions with a signature. So not just anyone can create these transactions. The user can only send um, valid signatures to the blockchain. The signatures contains the information about the transaction itself. For example, that Kim, so the public key of Kim, um, sends $25 to Donald. And to make sure that Kim is the owner of $25, um, we need the private key. In short, with the private key, um, we just can verify that we are the owner of a particular um, public key. If a signature is valid, that means if we can verify with our private key that we are the um, owner of a public key, and then we can add the transaction to the blockchain. Well, that was a short explanation of the most important parts of a blockchain. And in the next video, I will show you the difference between um, this Bitcoin blockchain and of Ethereum's blockchain. Okay, so now what is the big difference between the Bitcoin blockchain and Ethereum's? Well, as we discussed in the last video, the Bitcoin blockchain stores only pure transactions. The transactions only contain the information about the transaction itself. For example, how many money person A sends to person B. On the Ethereum blockchain now instead, we have an extension to the transaction itself. The account owner on the Ethereum blockchain um, can hold programming code. This programming code um, can be executed automatically as soon as we send money in form of Ether um, to the account owner. And the programming code is that um, what we call a smart contract. In theory, that looks um, something like this. This is the public key and this key holds the smart contract. If no person sends money um, to this key, we will execute this code automatically. And that's basically in short the big difference to the blockchain of Bitcoin. So our transactions can now also hold dynamic programming code. And this is the key feature of the Ethereum blockchain. Because every node on the network um, has a copy of the blockchain and the blockchain can hold the smart contracts. Therefore, there is no way how a single person could um, manipulate the code um, we want to execute. And this is what the Ethereum platform um, makes so powerful because we only need to trust the whole network. And how we can create the smart contracts and how we can send them um, to the blockchain, we will see in the next videos. 
Well, in this short video, I want to show you how we can download and install MetaMask. As I said in one of the last videos, MetaMask um, is a kind of portal with that we can access to the Ethereum blockchain. Okay, so first of all, I'm here on Google. Type in MetaMask download and click the first link. Add the MetaMask add-on to the browser and download it. If the download is complete, um, then you should see this MetaMask symbol. Open it and click try it now. Now let's go through the installation. First create a password. Click create. Next. and accept all of these steps. Now it's important um, that you save these words on your PC um, because we will need them later. And click next. Now drag and drop the words um, in the right order into the field. And confirm everything. And at last, we are now on the Ethereum mainnet. Therefore, let's go to a test network. Um, choose the ring B test network. And that's basically everything um, we need for now. And in the next video, we will buy some test tokens for our test environment. Okay, now let's buy some test tokens for the ring B test network. So for that, um, please go to this web page. You can find the link of this web page at the end of this video. Well, there are three possibilities how we can get some test tokens with Twitter, Google Plus or Facebook. In order to get these tokens, um, you just need to create a post on one of these platforms um, that contains your Ethereum address. So let's do this right now. Open MetaMask and copy your address. I will go to Twitter and I create a new post with the Ethereum address. Copy the link of the post. And paste the link um, into this input bar. I want 7.5 Ether. Now you need to wait a short time. And as you can see, we have now 7.5 Ether on the Ringby test network. In this video, we are going to start writing our first smart contract. In order to write this first contract, um, we will use an online code editor called Remix. Remix is made specifically um, for creating and testing Solidity smart contracts. Therefore, please go to remix.ethereum.org. You can see here now some default code. We will not use this, um, so you can ignore this. Instead, um, let's create a new file. Click the plus. Name it ico.solidity. So first of all, um, let's write some code. Let's start with pragma solidity 0.4.21. So this is just a version of solidity um, we will use for our smart contract. Now let's write contract ico. A new string, public name, and a function that we name ICO, public, and in the function we will set the name to demo coin. Then 
before we continue, um, a small thing I want to mention. If you've got an error message like that, then you need to choose another version of the compiler. Please do not um, change the Solidity version, because it's important um, that we have the same version to prevent um, errors depending on the version. Okay, so if you um, have got these error messages, um, then just go to Compile and select here the version 0.4.21. Now all error messages um, should be gone. Well, now let's talk about um, what we made here. So in order to create a new contract, we always start with the keyword contract followed by the name, so how you um, want to name the contract. By the way, this is similar like a class um, if you are familiar with object-oriented program languages. Then we created a new variable string, a public string that we call name. And we created a new function ICO and in the function we have set the name to demo coin. Important here is to understand, um, you can see the name of the function is the same like the contract. Therefore, this function is a so-called um, constructor. That means as soon we create a new instance of the contract ICO, we will execute the function ICO. So we will set immediately um, the name to demo coin. Well, in this video, um, I want to show you how you can deploy and test a smart contract and with the built-in local environment. So for that, um, you need to choose under environment, the JavaScript virtual machine. You can see here five test accounts, um, which are provide us 100 EFA. In order to create now a new instance of the smart contract, um, you simply need to click deploy. You can see we have got immediately a new instance of the smart contract without delay. And this is important um, because the JavaScript virtual machine um, is a local environment. That means this simulates us no real blockchain because if we want to deploy something on the real blockchain, um, we always need to wait a short time. Remember, the nodes on the networks um, first must approve the changes. Another thing we can see here is our deployment has cost some Ether. So always if we make a transaction, that means um, if we change something on the blockchain, we need to pay for that. How this is calculated and how this is working in detail, um, we will discuss in another video. For now, it's only important to understand that every change on the blockchain costs money. Okay, now let's have a look at our smart contract. First of all, as soon as we make here a variable public, the Remix editor creates automatically a new function that returns the value of the variable. In our case, you can see um, if we click the name, it will return us the string demo coin that we set in the constructor um, function. Another way how we can initialize um, some default values is as following. We can give the constructor a parameter. Then we can set the parameter to the name. To initialize the value, we can simply pass now the argument under deploy. Let's name this demo coin 2. And under the new instance, you can see the name has changed. In this video, I'm going to show you another possibility how you can test the smart contract. Instead testing this locally um, with the JavaScript virtual machine, you can transfer the smart contract directly to the RingB test network. For that, we need our portal MetaMask um, with some ESA in order to pay the transaction. 
So to do this, um, choose here the injected rep3 library. What rep3 actually is, um, we will discuss in the last section of this course um, when we connect the smart contract with our rep page. Okay, now let's deploy the smart contract. You can see this costs also money. Remember, we make some changes on the blockchain. Let's confirm this. Now you can see the behavior of a blockchain because it always takes some time to deploy the smart contract to the blockchain. So this is something we definitely need to consider for later um, when we create the web page and when the user can interact with the smart contract. Now, first of all, you can see the instance of the smart contract um, looks like if we have just um, used the local environment. There are no differences on the Remix interface, but you can see now a link. Let's open the link. This is the Ether scan of RingP. That means our smart contract is now public. So everyone is now able to see our smart contract. We have here the block height with four confirmations. Remember here the blocks of a blockchain. Then from, um, this is the address from our MetaMask account. To the contract we just created. We can click now the contract um, to see more details. We can see here the contract creator. So in this case, our MetaMask address, the balance of the smart contract. So how many ESA um, this smart contract contains and the number of transactions. Another thing I want to mention is we don't have always to create a new instance of a smart contract. Um, if we want to test something, we also can just add the address of a smart contract. We can do this by copy the address and pasting it under add address. Now you can see it the same um, just like before. So that's everything I wanted to um, discuss in this video. But in general, to test the code, um, I always would recommend to use the JavaScript virtual machine because um, this is much, much faster um, for our testing purposes. In this video, we will start creating our ICO code. So we will create all the variables we need for our ICO. And in the next video, we will talk about um, the variables more in detail. So what in Solidity here is special. So let's start to write them all down. So first we have our name. I think this should be clear. Um, this will be the name of our token. Then a string public symbol. This will be the symbol of our token. For example, DC. And integer decimals. This is for the decimal places. Um, of our cryptocurrency and public integer bonus ends. ICO ends and ICO starts. An integer that counts all the um, contributors. You end all tokens for all tokens that our um, ICO has generated. Address admin and the mapping address your int public balances. Now let's initialize all the values in the constructor. Decimals to 18, symbol to DC, bonus ends. And now plus two weeks. ICO ends in four weeks.
and ICO starts to now. We will set the start supply of all tokens to 100. The admin is the msg.sender. And at last, we set the balances of msg.sender to all tokens. Okay, that's everything for this short video. And in the next video, we will talk about the variables more in detail. Well, now let's talk about the basic variables in Solidity. First of all, you can see here a list with all the basic variables we use often in Solidity. So we have the two strings, public name and symbol. A string is just a sequence of characters um, like demo coin or DC. The next six variables are integers. I think you should know them from other programming languages. In short, they can only hold whole numbers um, like that. In Solidity, we can use different types of integers. The unsigned and normal integer. The difference here is that a normal integer can also hold minus values and the unsigned um, can only hold positive numbers. Another thing um, I want to mention here is following. Um, let's create a new instance of the smart contract. Click deploy. And now let's click for example here on decimals. You can see the editor creates here an unsigned integer 256. Um, this is because we don't specify the integer. Therefore, Solidity has created us automatically an uint 256. You can also use here, for example, 8, 16, 32, etc., um, up to 256. So, uint um, is the smallest type you can use um, to store only values from 0 up to 255. That means the higher the number here is, the more values you can store. And uint 256. Um, can store pretty much every number. Well, maybe you wonder um, why we can specify the integers. So this is because, remember, um, if we want to deploy a contract um, to the blockchain, um, this will cost always money. And therefore, the larger the type, the more you have to pay for storage. But at present, um, this is not really relevant because the increase in price um, is not extremely significant. For this reason, um, I will use the biggest numbers for our ICO. Next, um, just for completeness, we can also use fixed and unsigned fixed values. So we can store here numbers with decimal. You can see here um, two examples. Another special type from Solidity um, is the address. This is a special variable only for Solidity. And this can hold the hexadecimal addresses um, from the users of the Ethereum network. For our ICO, um, we can use this for example to specify the creator of our smart contract. Another special type from Solidity is the mapping. In short, this is like an array. So this is the default type um, we use in Solidity to create a collection of key value pairs. Important here is all keys um, must be of the same type and all values um, must be of the same type. For our project, um, we use this in order to return the amount of money as integer of a specified address. For example, let's test this. Copy the address from the account, paste this in here, And you can see we, um, the creator of the smart contract, have 100 DC coins. And that's everything for this video. And in the next video, we're going to have a look at the values in the constructor function. Let's continue on um, with the values of the constructor. So as soon as we create an instance of the smart contract, um, this is the case when we deploy the smart contract then the smart contract automatically calls this constructor function. So in the constructor, 
reinitialize all the variables, the strings and integers like name, decimal and all tokens. Special here um, is the time. The keyword now returns an integer. Under ICO start you can see this integer. Um, let's copy this. And let's go for example to this web page. As you can see, this is just the integer in seconds since January 1st, um, 1970. In our case, um, it's the timestamp when we have deployed the smart contract. Two weeks or four weeks, um, I think this is clear. So with that, um, we can add two or four weeks to our time. Then next we have the admin, so msg.sender. Um, this just returns the hexadecimal address um, of the person who calls the function. In this case, um, this is the address from our account because we are the creator of the smart contract. And in the last line, we set the balances of the msg.sender to all tokens. So all the 100 star tokens. And this is by the right reason why the creator of the contract has all 100 star tokens. Well, now I want to create the necessary functions we need for our ICO. I want to start with the buy tokens function. So let's start. Function buy tokens public payable. The keyword payable um, is important because payable means whenever we want to call this function, we have to pay money for this call. Because with payable, we make some changes on the blockchain. Then we need an UN tokens, so the actual tokens um, we want to create. In the next line, we set the tokens to msg.value. MSG.value um, holds the amount of money um, that we send to this function. How this call looks like in this editor, um, we will see in just a few moments. Then we need access to the address of the MSG.sender. So the person who calls this function, um, because we want to give him the new tokens we just created. And at last, in order to increase the total supply of all tokens, um, we will set all tokens to all tokens plus tokens. Let's test this um, by creating a new instance of the smart contract. As you can see, the new function is red. So whenever the function made with the Remix editor is red, um, it will cost money. In order to call a payable function, um, we can do so by using the built-in JavaScript virtual machine. You can type here the amount of ESA, for example. Um, let's buy tokens for one ESA. And then just click the buy tokens function. Now you can see here in the console a successful transaction from the account holder to the buy token functions um, of the smart contract. You can see under the account now um, that we have less money left. So the um, run ESA plus the amount of gas um, we just paid for the transaction. Now let's check the balance of our account. Copy and paste our address um, under the balances function. And as you can see, we have no really big number of tokens. 
So the 100 initialized tokens from the start and the number of tokens um, we just bought. And why this is such a big number, um, we will discuss in the next video um, because this is really important. Something um, we haven't really discussed yet um, are the differences between Ether, Ray, etc. Let's go for example to this web page. You can find the link of this web page um, at the end of this video. So these are all units of measurement of the same thing. So one ether here, for example, is this amount of ray. If you change the value of ether, you can see how the amount is changing. And this is really important because the default measurement unit um, in smart contracts is ray. And therefore, we have under balances um, such a big number because this is the amount of one ether in ray plus 100 ray um, from the start. As you can imagine, 100 ray um, for the smart contract holder um, at the start um, isn't really much. Therefore, let's change this now. Let's say for example, the smart contract holder wants 100 ESA at the start. Um, that would be this amount of ray. Let's copy and paste this here. Another thing we need to consider now um, is if we buy tokens, because now if we buy tokens, um, this has the same unit like Ether. That means in this example, one DC token um, equals one Ether. This is because we set the tokens to the msg.value. So the value in Ether that the call of this function sends um, to this function. If you want to convert um, one Ether now into 100 DC tokens, for example, um, then you can simply multiply MSG value with 100. So now one Ether um, is 100 DC tokens worth. But in this case, um, we also need to multiply the start tokens with 100. Because as you remember, these are only 100 Ether. Well, now let's talk about the gas system in Ethereum. As I already said in one earlier video, whenever you modify the blockchain, so if you send tokens, interact with a contract, send Ether or do anything else on the blockchain, you must pay for that computation. The payment is calculated in gas and gas is paid in Ether. Why do we need this gas system? Well, you can compare this with Amazon um, Web Services, for example. This is also not for free. You need to pay for storage on the servers. In the world of Ethereum, we do not pay Amazon, but instead we pay the miners with gas. More precisely, we pay for every single line of code. For example, if we have a look on our code, let's take all tokens equals all tokens plus tokens and tokens equals MSG value multiplied with 100. In this list, um, you can see how much every single operation um, cost. In our example, um, the two lines of code um, would cost three gas for addition plus five gas for multiplication. So in total, um, three plus five um, is eight. So this is basically for what you pay, but how does um, this look like in practice? So for example, when we create a transaction, well, if we create a transaction, um, we need to distinguish three properties the gas price, the gas limit, and the actual transaction costs or fee. To get a better idea um, how this is used in practice, let's pivot um, to this tab. I'm here on etherscan.io. So the etherscan um, of the mainnet. 
I have here a random transaction from someone um, who has sent 0.2 ESA to this address. So let's talk about the gas price. The gas price is the amount of ray um, we are offering per unit of gas. Based on this example, um, if we are willing to pay a gas price of 10, that would be 10 times 8. So 10 ray per unit of gas. In other words, the gas price would be 80 ray. The price you pay for each unit um, increases or decreases how quickly your transaction will be mined. The more you are willing to pay per unit of gas, the faster um, the transaction will processed. Next we have the gas limit. This is the maximum amount of units of gas um, the sender is willing to spend on a transaction. By default a standard transaction um, costs at least 21,000 gas. This is a good example here because the spender used um, a gas limit of 90,000. But as I already said, the full transaction like this um, costs only 21,000 gas. So the actual gas consumed um, by the transaction was 21,000. In this case, um, all unused gas is refounded to the sender. So the 90,000 minus 21,000. What happens if you spend less than 21,000 as gas limit? Well, then you have a problem because you will lose all your gas and the transaction won't be executed. Because that the miner is even able to detect the transaction, um, you need to pay for that. And the last property um, we can find in all transactions is the actual transaction fee. This is simple because this is just the gas limit um, multiplied with the gas price. In this case, um, it's this multiplied with 21,000. Okay, that's everything for the gas system now. And in the next video, we will continue with our ICO code. In this short video, I want to show you the other kind of function we can use in Solidity. For that, let's write function total supply public constant returns and you int return all tokens so this is a function that returns the value as integer of all tokens I wanted to show you the payable and return function at the beginning because I want to make the difference clear. So let's deploy this smart contract to the RingP test network. Log in in MetaMask. And click deploy. Confirm it. Okay, now let's have a look at the total supply function. Whenever you only return a value, so if you only want to call a function, we do not change anything on the blockchain. Therefore, this doesn't cost money and it runs instantly. Compared with the payable function, the payable function costs money here because we modify the blockchain. And therefore you need to consider um, that this takes always some amount of time um, to execute. For example, let's buy some tokens on the real test network. And you can see um, this takes some amount of time. So summarized, um, basically these are the two main types of functions we can use in Solidity. So important to understand is that payable functions cost money and that it takes some amount of time um, to be executed. And the other one um, just returns value and this doesn't cost money. 
because we do not make any changes here on the blockchain. In this video, I want to create some helper functions for our ICO. So one function that checks the actual balance of the user who calls the new function and another function that returns the address of the user who calls the function. Let's get started with my balance. So this function will be public and it will return an integer. And what do we want to return? Well, the balances of the msg.sender, so the person who calls this function. The same procedure and we can do for my address. And this will return the address. Let's create a new address, my address, and set it to the sender. And then let's return this value. Finally, let's test the new functions with the local environment. First, let's check the function, my balance. And this is working. You can see here all the star tokens. And my address is working as well. Now let's continue on um, with an end sale function that sends all the collected money that the whole smart contract contains to the admin. So to us, the creator of the smart contract. That means if the ICO ends, you as admin can call this function and then you have access to all the collected money of the smart contract. To do this, we can write following. Function and sale public. msg.sender equals admin. And admin.transfer address this balance. The keyword require here is important um, because we only want that the admin of the smart contract can call this function. With require, we can check um, if the msg.sender is the admin. If this is true, then the next line of code will be executed. Otherwise, the function stops here and you will receive an error message. If the caller of this function is the admin, then we want to transfer all the money of the smart contract to the address of the admin. The balance we get here is the money in ESA and not the DC tokens um, we have created. We can simply test this now, um, save this with control S. Um, oops, a small typo, um, remove the point here. Let's create now a new instance of the smart contract. Change the account and let's buy tokens for one Ether. We can check now our current balance um, here. And under the account, you can see we have um, one Ether less now. Let's call with this account now the end sale function. Remember, um, this is not the admin of the smart contract um, because we just changed the account. And therefore, you can see we receive an error message. Now change the account to the admin of the smart contract.
and we have a successful transaction. Our admin has now all the collected ESA from the smart contract. Under the account, we have now um, plus one ESA. In this video, we are going to extend our ICO smart contract with the ERC20 standard interface. So, what is the ERC20 standard? The ERC20 standard outlines a set of common rules that all tokens can follow on the Ethereum network to produce expected rules. This is important for later um, if you decide to interact with other smart contracts or if you want to launch um, the cryptocurrency on an exchange, for example. So, in order to be um, fully ERC20 compliant, um, we need to incorporate a specific set of functions um, into our smart contract. These are basically um, four functions. Get the total token supply, get the account balance, transfer the token, and approve spending the token. Because this is a standard, um, we don't need to code this from scratch. We simply can go to this um, web page, for example. You can find the link of this web page um, at the end of this video. For now, um, let's just um, copy all of the necessary functions. And then in the next video, we will talk about every single function. First, we need the ERC20 interface. Copy this. Paste this in our smart contract. Let's copy the save mess library. Let's extend our smart contract um, with the new contracts. First, let's write contract ICO is ERC20 interface. That means the new class is now available in our smart contract. And let's write using save mess for you int. So now we have access um, to the safe mess library in our smart contract. Then let's copy this mapping. And at last all of these functions. Paste them into the smart contract. That's everything for now. And in the next video, we will discuss all the new functions. Well, now let's talk about the new functions of the ERC20 standard interface. Okay, so first we created a new contract that we named ERC20 interface. The first functions are all returning some values. What they are returning exactly, um, we will see in just a few moments. And the other two lines of code are events. They are really important because they are responsible for in order to track changes on the blockchain. For example, if you make a transaction, um, this will display here. How we can use the events, um, we will see in the next video. We also added a library save mess. This is for security in order to prevent overflows. I have added a link about overflows and solidity at the end of this lecture. So if you want a more um, detailed explanation about that. But in short, if we do not use this library, um, we could get incorrect results from arithmetics um, operations. And this is something we definitely need to prevent. Then we have all the new functions of the ERC20 interface. And what they are doing is basically exact that and um, what you can see in the comments. But let's test all of these functions now um, to make this more clear. Choose the built-in virtual machine and deploy the ICO.
let's start with balance off. This is similar to the function my balance, but here we have to pass as argument the address now. Um, let's test this. Copy the address of our account and paste this in the balance of function. So you can see now the same balance um, just like before. Then the transfer function does transfer the balance from token owner's account to two account. Owner's account must have sufficient balance to transfer. Zero value transfers are allowed. Before we test this, um, you can see here by the way the use case of the save mess. This is an addition and this is a subtraction. And we use here a transfer event in order to track this transfer um, on the blockchain. Let's test this now. Change our account to account 2. Copy the address and let's change the account back to account 1. Paste the address in the transfer function. And let's say we want to transfer 10,000 DC tokens to this address from our current account. In the console, you can see now a successful transaction. Let's check the balance now of the address. You can see the account 2 has now 10,000 DC tokens. And that's basically everything you need to know um, for this function. And finally, we have three functions which are all connected together. Let's test them. First, change to account 2. This account has 10,000 DC tokens. Change to account 3 and copy the address. Change back to account 2. Now we call with account 2 the approve function. Let's say, for example, we are willing to spend 1000 um, tokens to account 3. Account 3 um, is the address we just copied. You can see the transaction is successful. With the third function, we can check now how much account 2 is willing to spend to account 3. This is a public function, so anyone can call this. Um, for example, let's do this with account 5. You can see 1000 remaining DC tokens. Now account 3 is able to call this function in order to get the tokens from account 2. So we need here the transfer from function. Address from is account 2 and 2 is account 3. Let's say for example we want 100 tokens. And important here is um, that you choose account 3 in order to call the transfer from function. And now you can see the remaining 1000 DC tokens minus 100. Let's change this to 400. You can see minus 400 to 500. And zero left. If we click the transfer from function again, we will receive an error message. And that's basically everything and what these functions are doing. As I already said, um, this is only important for the ERC20 interface um, in order to make the token work. And at last, let's delete um, these comments. And in the next video, we will modify our buy tokens function. Okay, now in this last video of this lecture, we will modify our buy tokens function because there are still some problems with this function. I want to show you these problems now. 
So let's deploy the smart contract to the ring B test network, copy the address of the new smart contract and let's go to ringb.esascan.io. Click view tokens, paste the address in the search field. You can see Esascan um, is able to detect our new ERC20 interface token. We have here all the values we created in the last videos. Let's go to this link and let's buy token for one Ether. So normally we should see now after some amount of time the transaction under the transfers. You can see MetaMask has approved our transaction on the blockchain. If we refresh the page, the total supply has increased, but the transfers field um, is still empty. Well, this is because, um, as I already said in the last video, we need to call an event that tracks the new transactions here. Therefore, we need to modify um, the buy tokens function now. Especially, um, we need to call the transfer event. Therefore, let's write transfer address zero MSG sender tokens. That means we are going to send the tokens from the address zero to the MSG.sender. Let's also use now the save mess in the buy token function. So we will multiply MSG value with 100. And let's add the two additions also. Next, let's add the bonus for our ICO. So if the time now is smaller or equals bonus ends, remember bonus ends is the time in two weeks. Then we will offer a bonus of 25%. We simply can multiply MSG value with 125. Otherwise, if we are not in the window of the bonus, then we will use the price um, just like before. Well, and at last, let's simply um, increase the integer of all contributors plus one. Okay, that should be everything for the ICO code of the smart contract. So finally, let's test our changes. Deploy the smart contract to the RingP test network. Search our new token. Let's buy one Ether. Confirm it. And let's wait for the improvements on the test blockchain. So the function all contributors is working. Plus one. My balance also. And let's refresh the Ether scan page. And you can see now our transaction. So that was everything um, I wanted to show you in this lecture. Now our basic ICO code is ready. Therefore, in the next lecture, we will create our web page for this ICO. And then in the last lecture, we will combine this ICO code with the ICO page.